Okay, we are back. This is Math 200. We're looking at Review 5. That is Chapter 9, 10. And um, well, let's get started. We've got uh, write the given expression in a single logarithm. And so this one, remember minus means divide in log land. So this is log base 3, because all of them have the same base. So that's the only reason you can do this. If there were different bases, you couldn't do that. 5 divided by, and it would be x, but it would also be divided by 2y, because that's also minus. So it's, um, we'll just make it 2xy, or 2yx, it doesn't matter which order. Number comes first, though. And that's it. Done. So minus means divide. Let's do the next one, number 2, log base 9 of 9 to the 14th. Well, remember, we can say, come on down to the 14. So we have 14 log base 9 of 9. Well, remember what logs mean. It's asking 9 to what power gives you 9. Well, that's 1. So that answers just 14. This one is actually very similar because ln is shorthand for log base e of e to the 10x. So we can 10x, come on down. And it's basically asking e to what power gives you e? Well, that's 1 again. So we have 1 times 10x equals 90. Well, that's 10x equals 90. And now we have to do a little solving on that one. This one is just an expression. This one is an equation. So we have to actually solve 10x equals 90. And divide both sides by 10. So x will equal 9. And we're done. So that's 1, 2, and 3 on the first page of the review. Let's keep going, shall we? I didn't read the instructions. You'll notice it's all scribbly on the key. I should have read the instructions. I jumped right in and wanted to solve for x. It doesn't ask you to solve for x. It asks you to write it as a log. So to write this in logarithmic, this is the base. So it's log. Base is 1 fifth of 625 and then equals the power, x. And that's it, that's all they wanted. They didn't want us to actually solve it. All right, number five. So that's, uh, remember to read the directions. <laughs> f of x is equal to e to the x plus seven, and it says uh, evaluate when x is five. So they basically want us to find f of five, that's e to the fifth power plus seven. You put this in your calculator, that is ln, um, second ln, and that'll be e to the power five, and then hit enter, and then do plus seven. So you get uh, round to three decimal places, 155.413. Here's the answer for five. All right, next page. We've got, oh, find the inverse, interesting. So find the inverse of f of x equals x to the fifth plus seven. Okay, so to find the inverse, what you do is you change the x and the y. Remember this is y equals, so now instead of y, we're gonna make that an x, we're gonna make that a y, and now we're going to solve for y. So isolate the variable. So we have x minus 7 equals y to the fifth. And then how do we get rid of the fifth? Well, we take the fifth root of both sides. You don't need the plus or minus thing because it's an odd root. And so our answer is y is equal to the fifth root of x minus 7. And then if you want, we can go fancy form. Let's go fancy form. So 
f to the negative 1 of x, that is the inverse of x, is equal to the fifth root of x minus 7. If we were to graph those, uh, those would be kind of tough to graph because we didn't really talk about roofs, but they would be, um, they would be reflections over y equals x. It, it makes a kind of cool graph. In college algebra, we looked at the graphs a little bit more with inverses of higher powered things. All right, so let's look at, um, that was, oh, that was, wait, that was number six. I'm sorry, that was six. That wasn't eight, that was number six. <laughs> All right, so seven is easy peasy. They give you, they want the inverse, they want the domain, and they want the range. Remember, domain is just a list of the x's, range is just a list of the y's. So those are super easy. Um, and inverse is actually pretty easy too. When they give you points, all you do is you flip-flop the x and the y. So they give you 0, 2. So the first point we have in our inverse is 2, 0. They give you 2, 3. So the next point is 3, 2. They give you 4, 4. So that looks the same, 4, 4. And they give you 1, 7. So we make it 7, 1. So no work for that one, really. Just writing down the x and the y switched around. That is the inverse. All right, domain now is just a list of these x's. 2, 3, 4, and 7. And range, that's 0, 2, 4, and 1. So we'll put them in order. 0, 1, 2, 4. There we go. And that's it. Domain and range. Uh, number eight and nine are pretty quick and easy. Um, that is, tell if it's one to one. So all we have to do is look at the points given, and if there's a repeat in y, it is not one to one. One and 11, so all you do is look at the y values. So we got seven, we got negative 26, we got 13, we got negative 12, we got negative 24, and we got 11, no repeats. So that means it is one to one. All right, number nine. They have a line, they have a graph given of a linear equation, so it's a line. And it says, is that one to one? Well. If you draw a horizontal line through it and it hits it in only one spot, it is one to one. And so that one is also one to one. So both of those are pretty easy, I think. Just you're looking at the y values, making sure there's no repeats, and just looking to make sure a horizontal line doesn't hit it in only one spot. All right, so now the nested functions, these are a little trickier. So let's look at that. The nested functions or the composite functions means I take one function and kind of set it inside of the other, like how there's a nest in a tree. That's why they call them nested functions. Um, so let's take a look at that. Number 10. If f of x is 5x minus 9, and g of x is 12x minus 12, 2x, I'm sorry, 2x minus 12. Let me make sure I wrote them down. 5x minus 9, and 2x minus 12. Okay, we got them. And now they want me to find f of g of x and g of f of x. So two different problems. So f of g of x means I take this and I put it in for x. So I'm going to take, let me write down, it's going to be 5 mm, minus 9, but instead of 5x minus 9, what f of x is, we're going to insert g of x into it. So I'm going to take this and put it where x was. So 2x minus 12, and now you do the distributive property, 10x minus 60 minus 9 
And then so f of g of x is 10x minus 69. Done. Then to find the, the um, other way, g of f of x, you do a similar thing, but instead we're going to write 2 mm, minus 12. So instead of 2x minus 12, we're going to insert the 5x minus 9 in for x. See, that's why it's called a nested function. See, that function is nested inside of this function. And now we figure out what that composite function is. That's the fancy way of saying simplified version. So 10x minus 30 is g of f of x. All right. Lovely, lovely. Uh, use the square root property to solve the quadratic equation. Okay, so now we're, we're solving quadratic equations. And so these get a little tougher. Um, this one's not that bad, though. This one I can do with one little bit here. 11 d squared plus 270 equals 295. So because there is no d term, we don't have to use quadratic formula or factoring or anything, and just isolate it. So d squared is equal to 25 by subtracting 270 for both sides. And now we don't want d squared, we want d. So you do the square root of both sides, but when it's an even root, you have to do plus or minus. Let's go to 25. And so our two answers are positive 5 and negative 5. We'll shorthand it plus or minus 5. But there are two answers there, positive and negative 5. Oh, I think for the computer, they don't want you to do the plus or minus. They want you to go like this, like 5 comma negative 5, like that. I'm pretty, yeah, it says use a comma to separate multiple solutions. So I, I wrote that on... The review so you would be able to see it the same kind of thing when you're doing the test so you don't it I do double check you do have a safety net there I double check if it marks it wrong and I would give you the full credit if you would have expressed it as plus or minus five but but if you don't want uh, to go through the hassle of that you can just write it how they tell you to. All right, uh, 12, solve, okay. So they have 2a minus three quantity squared plus 11 equals 60. So we're gonna solve this in much the same way that we just solved that one. We're gonna isolate the square. So it is quantity 2a minus three squared equals 49. And now we're going to ditch that squared and do the plus or minus the square root of 49. And then we'll move the 3 over to the other side. So 2a is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 49. And then divide everything by 2. And so a is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 49 all over 2. Oh, but wait. See, if this were ugly, if that were... Like 51 instead, if that was 3 plus or minus the square root of 51 all over 2, we'd be done. You just circle it and go, woo, answer. Um, but I can do the square root of 49. And when I do that, I get 7, and now that can play with the 3, right? So we break it into two solutions, 3 plus 7 divided by 2, and 3 minus 7 divided by 2. So 3 plus 7 is 10 over 2, which is 5. So that is one of our two solutions. Remember, two solutions. And then negative 4 over 2 is 2. Negative 2. So that is our other solution. So 5 and negative 2 for that one. Number 13, solve by completing the square. And again, completing the square can be a method that we use to to solve equations, to solve difficult equations. Um, I would likely use, if that was my only intention was just to solve, I would probably use quad form most times. I could see scenarios where you want to use completing the square to solve. Um, like if you didn't have a calculator, you want to use large calculations. Um, 
you could do it. But usually we're doing completing the square for graphing purposes. When you're graphing parabolas, it's actually called vertex form when you complete the square. And I can explain that really quick on this problem, 13. We've got a squared plus 10a, and then they have a little blank spot, and then equals 11, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to find the magic number that completes the square on this side. And to find that magic number, you pull the 10 out, you do two things to it. You cut it in half and square the result. So 5 squared is 25. 25 is the magic number. I add 25 to this side. I add 25 to that side. Now, what I've done is I've made this into a, it's called a perfect square trinomial. It's, I've completed the square, meaning what multiplies to give you 25, that adds to give you 10, that would be plus 5 plus 5. So you can factor it, and it equals 36. Now look, it's always going to be whatever number you had halved before you squared it. That's always going to be what it factors into. Those two are always going to match. So we have a plus 5 quantity squared equals 36. And now it looks just like the problem above it, where we just do, okay, solve, solve it. So a plus 5 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 36. And we isolate the a. a is equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 36. Again, if this were ugly, if that were 37, we would stop. We would say negative 5 plus the square root of 37 and negative 5 minus the square root of 37. But because it's a pretty um, perfect square, I could take the square root of that, which is 6. And now I have to split it into two problems, negative 5 plus 6 and negative 5 minus 6. And I end up with 1 for one of my answers and negative 11 for the other answer. All right? So that process is called completing the square. You take the B term, pull it out, cut it in half, square the result. That's the magic number you add to both sides. Don't forget to add it to this side. Very, very, very common error. People remember this side and they forget about that side. It's an equation, so you have to do the same thing to both sides. All right? And then you express it as a perfect square, and then you solve. And sometimes it's easier. Like if this is an ugly square root, you just stop up there. But... It's, if it's pretty, you got to keep going. So we had to keep going. Let's see. Here, here's an ugly one. Let's do this one. It's also complete the square, number 14. So we're solving by completing the square. Oh, and this time I'll explain what I was talking about with graphing a little bit. Um... So we have 3w squared minus 18w equals 30. Ooh, so there is a problem with this one. When we complete the square, this has to be a 1. It is not an option to have that not be 1. So before I start the problem, I'm going to divide everything on both sides of the equation by 3. I'm allowed to do that. Um, when I'm only working for zero. So in this case, I'm only working for zero, so I don't have to worry about it. But in, in college algebra, you can't do that because that'll mess up the graph because I would want you to graph. So here, pretend with me for a moment that this was the problem presented, not that. So let's complete the square. We'll pull that negative six out and then we'll cut it in half and square the result. So negative 3 squared, that is 9. 9 is the magic number. So if I add 9 to this side, I add 9 to that side. And now I have w, w, what multiplies to give you 9, but adds to give you negative 6. Remember, you always have your answer right here. It's always the thing before you squared it. So negative 3, and that's 19. So w minus 3 squared equals 19. And so right now, again, if it didn't have that 3 to begin with, and now we're trying to graph it, I could move the 19 over and change that 0 into a y. I could say y is equal to quantity w minus 3 uh, quantity squared minus 19 equals y. And then the vertex would be at 3, negative 19. 
and I could do the vertex. And then I could put in a value and find a couple of points and boom, do a quick graph. So that's usually why we're completing the square. In this case, we're completing it to actually solve. So now um, solve it. That would be square root of both sides, right? So um, that and that. When it's an even, we throw that plus or minus on it. And then we red row over the three over. I, you always put the number in front of the square root. So it's three plus or minus the square root of 19. That is the correct answer for the computer. They want you to oh, use a comma to separate multiple solutions. So look, on number 14 on my key, I just left it like that. I would still give you full credit if you leave it like that. But um, three plus the square root of 19 and then a comma three minus the square root of 19. That's what they want in the computer. So if you want it to say terrific or little green arrow or whatever, um, that's what you have to do. All right, but those are the same thing. That little shorthand, that little plus or minus shorthand, we use all the time in math. All right, so let's look at the next one. Use quadratic formula and use a comma to separate. Okay, so here we go again. Number 15. Oh, 21 minutes. We're gonna. Um, I'll pick up on number 15 on the next video.